Welcome to the Words in Season podcast. My name is Kara Marie Morris, and I'm your host. Let's go to our first foundational scripture. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, We are God's own handiwork, His workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus. We've been born anew, born again, that we may do those good works which He predestined and He planned beforehand, that we would be able to take paths which He prepared ahead of time, and that we should walk in them and living the good life which He prearranged and He made ready for us to live. And then, of course, in 1 Peter 2 and verse 21, it says that we would be able to follow in Christ's example. As Christ followed the path that God had for him on earth, so God has a path for us to follow. Things that are prearranged and ready for us to live as we step out in faith and take these steps hand in hand with him. So thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode. But most importantly, remember that every time you open the Bible, the word of God, that Jesus always has a word in season for you. So in these past episodes, we've been talking about the path that God has ready for us to live. This path and this journey of being a Christian. And we know our destination and that is set. And we are going to be in heaven with him forever. And then when we believed in our heart and confessed with our mouth, we became Christians. And that same nature, the nature of God, the nature that's in Christ became a part of us. It came inside of us to live in us, to empower us to walk these paths. And so what are we doing on this path? Are we just biding our time until he comes again? Or we fall asleep in death? No, he has something for us to do. And so the first episode we looked about how what we wear matters. It doesn't matter the circumstances, but that we can clothe ourselves with humility, with the fruit of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit, all the things that God has provided. So what we wear on this journey matters. How we pack matters, that we want to travel light, that we're not carrying the burdens of this world. And then also who we are following. The more dangerous the path, the more important it is to make sure you're following in the footsteps of the person in front of you. And who you're following matters, whether it's a leader, a teacher, a mentor, a guide, a pastor, and most of all, Christ himself following in those footsteps. God empowered us to be able to do it, but it matters who we're following. Because of course we know whoever we're following is going to determine the direction our life is going in. And then this week I want to talk about how you go. It matters. That God doesn't want us to go in anxiety or worry or fear. Does it mean we're going to know everything? No. It doesn't even mean there won't be challenges. But what it does mean is that He will be with us. So let's go to John 14 and verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my own peace I give to you, not as the world gives, that's not what I give to you. And do not let your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed, and do not permit yourselves to be fearful or intimidated or cowardly or unsettled. We can be at peace in this journey. How we're going, we can go in peace because he himself is our peace. He is our freedom from fear. It says that the truth of God's word sets us free. What does it set us free from? From the fear of death, from the fear of man, from the fear of failure. Whatever the fear is that the enemy has been allowed a stronghold in my own mind or in your mind, we are able to be free from that because it is the truth of God's word that set us free. And in John 14, 17, it says, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit is that spirit of truth. So how we go, we're following the spirit of truth. Like we looked at last week, that who you follow matters. And then this week, that how you go, how can we go in truth? Because we're following the spirit of truth that brings peace. So then in Proverbs 3, starting in verse 17, it says, 
Her highways are pleasantness and all her paths are peace. Whose highways? Whose path? Those who are righteous, those who have right standing with God, and that is believers, believers in Jesus Christ. And continuing down in verse 23 of Proverbs 3, it says, Then you will walk in your way securely, and in your confidence you will be trusting, and you will not dash your foot or stumble. And when you lie down, you shall not be afraid. Yes, you shall lie down, and your sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid or sudden terror, or be in panic nor in the stormy blast or the storm or the ruin of the wicked when it comes, for you will be guiltless. For the Lord shall be your confidence, firm and strong, and shall keep your foot from being caught in a trap or a hidden danger. We can be on a peaceful path because He is our peace. How we go on this path, it matters. Not fearful or anxious, or trying to get off this path because it looks like there's going to be some challenges down the road. But knowing that He is with us keeps us on the path that is before us. Jesus said, my peace. In this world, you're going to have trouble. But I give you my peace, a peace that is permanent, a peace you can build your life on, a peace you can take with you to work or take with you when you're home or take with you when you're raising your kids. It is the permanent peace that God has given us. And of course, we know that Jesus is that Prince of Peace. He is a person and He is with us and He is leading us. He didn't say there wouldn't be challenges. It's not always easy with Him, but it's always good because He is with us. And then in Matthew 11 and verse 28, Jesus says to us, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to what? work harder so you can try to be a good Christian, so you can try to make enough money? No, he said, come to me, those that are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will give you rest. I will put you at ease and relieve and refresh your soul. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and meek and humble in heart, and you will find rest and relief and ease and refreshment recreation and blessed quiet for your soul. For my yoke is wholesome, it's useful, it's good, it's not hard, harsh, sharp, or pressing, but it's comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light. His yoke for you is easy, and the burden is light. Again, it's not that it's easy to just do everything and wake up. Yes, I feel like waking up this morning and raising my kids and taking care of things I need to take care of on my job. No, but with Him, it's light because He gives us divine strategy. He gives us divine wisdom. And that is what leads us into that path of peace as we're following the Holy Spirit. We can follow in the footsteps of Jesus as He followed in the footsteps of His Father. So we will find rest because we find out that it's not just us doing it by ourselves. Our mind, our will, and emotions that are constantly being reprogrammed as we study the Word of God, they're reprogrammed to know that I'm at rest, that it's not just me, that I'm not alone doing this, but it is a team, me, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with us and the people that God has put in our path. We can do what God has called us to do. And then in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 17 and verse 7, it says, Most blessed is the man who trusts and relies and is confident in the Lord, and whose hope and confidence is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by waters that spread out its roots by the river, and it shall not see and fear when heat comes. When the pressures of life come, we don't have to be fearful or anxious or worried or think, what's going to happen with the government? What's going to happen in my finances? What's going to happen next? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Because we are like, what are we like? A tree that has its roots by a river, and it shall not fear when heat comes, when the pressures of life comes, but its leaves shall be green, and it shall not be anxious and full of care in the year of drought, and it will not cease yielding fruit. No matter what's going on, whatever you see or what you don't see, 
there's no drought in God. There's no lack in God. No matter what the economy says, no matter what your bank account says, no matter who's in leadership or who's not in leadership, God is faithful and he will never let his children beg for bread. He has promised that he would never let the righteous be forsaken, nor the seed begging for bread. In Jeremiah 6 and verse 16, it says, Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look and ask for the eternal paths where the good old way is and then walk in it and you will find rest for your soul what is this eternal path it is the path that God has extended to us as his children in salvation we can say God he wants us to remind him he wants us to remember it's not that he forgets it's that we forget he wants us to go to his word and remember and to memorize and to understand and to ponder and to mutter these scriptures to ourselves to write them down and put them in our phone as a reminder and write them in a journal why because he wants us to find that good old way that eternal path what is that all that he has given us in salvation he wants to stand on the, us to stand on that path and say, Father, remind me, remind me what you've given me in my salvation in Christ. What do we find? We find rest for our souls. This thing can be so loud that it, there can be absolute quiet, absolute peace in your house. But this your mind, will, and emotions can be going 300 miles an hour because of what happened at work or what happened in your family or what's going to happen in the future. But we can find rest for our soul when we remember that He is with us. So how we travel, not traveling, ah, I got to get these things done now, but traveling at rest and at peace, taking care of this natural mind, spirit, soul, and body, making sure that I'm getting the rest that I need, but also making sure that my soul can rest. How can my soul rest? When I remember where my soul rests, we come to Him who are heavy laden. When I'm heavy laden and when I'm burdened, I can come to Jesus Christ and I can say, it doesn't matter that I don't see him. It doesn't matter that I don't know how it's going to happen. It doesn't matter that I can't touch, feel, taste, or smell. Because those things that are unseen are more real than what I see. And when I come to Jesus with the burdens of my life, there is a divine exchange, my burden for his rest. So how we travel on this journey matters. That we take a rest in every step that we take. I had a friend who she's done some pretty big hikes and she was mountain climbing and during this time she went and she was hiking in Africa at Mount Kilimanjaro and it took weeks of training and it took a lot of stamina but it was something that she really wanted to do and and the guides along her way they would tell them take a rest in every step they were able to keep going even be when the altitude was rising and the oxygen was becoming thin and the journey seemed like it would never end because they were able to find a rest in every step. So how we travel on this journey, it matters. Jesus is saying, come to me, those that are burdened and heavy laden, those that are anxious and fearful, and we can find a rest in every step because he's with us on the step now and he's already ahead of us and he's guarding us behind us. He is always with us on this journey. So thank you so much for tuning into the Words in Season podcast. Remember, you can find more episodes on Apple Podcasts, also on Spotify, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. But most importantly, remember that every time that you open the Bible, God's word for you that Jesus always has a specific, special word uniquely designed for you today. God bless you. Just one word in season and my heart comes to life.